All right, everyone. So we are the co-founders of Biome Health. I'm a Afif Ganoom, and this is Dr. Mehmood Ganoom. And if you can tell, there are Ganoom's not a regular name. We're related. He's my dad. I'm his son. I'm a biotech attorney by background, and so my dad is the scientist that named the microbiome. But you've done a tremendous amount of research in immunity itself. So we thought it would be helpful to really delve into explaining not just immunity, but how microbiome and gut health plays, and really how people can optimize it, right? Absolutely, I mean, what's important also why we decided to talk about immunity, because we know people who are exposed to coronavirus or the COVID-19, if their immunity is weak, then they are more susceptible to being infected with this virus. And, and so let's explain and let, let's get into the weeds because you hear this term immunity, immunity, like what, what does that actually mean, right? And so when we talk about immunocompromised, people sometimes hear that, you know, they'll often think about, oh, like cancer patients or extremely old people, but there's a lot of uh, conditions or life stages that can be immunocompromised. So for example, very young children, where their immunity system's growing, right? Yes. All the way to uh, people like yourself that are elderly. No, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But uh, in, in all seriousness, people that are older, that their, their immunity is starting to wane. So it's not just if you have an underlying condition, right? It, it can be- Absolutely, absolutely. Like your immunity could be uh, really compromised based on different things. It could be underlying disease, it could be your age. Yep. That's why these days we say people who are more than 60 or 70, they are more susceptible to the coronavirus. So, so clearly where you are in your life, it could be. Whereas if you are young, it, you tend to be healthy. And w what this means that your immunity is strong. Yeah, and, and before we get into, because I want to talk about that, what does that mean that your immunity is strong? Why is it important with infections? That's what we'll talk about in a second. But what I want to talk about is that your your immunity can be compromised, not just from conditions, but things like stress, uh, the way you're eating, alcohol, smoking. Like there's a number of things that you can do that will actually compromise your immunity. Absolutely, and that's, I mean, that's when you hear about people, how you can improve uh, your uh, immunity is exactly what you say. If you smoke and this sort of thing, this is not gonna help people to have a good immunity. But really what we want to do here is to find another way which is based on recent research to show that immunity also lies in our gut. And, and we'll get to that because I know you're anxious to get into like the microbiome and immunity, but I, I want to also explain to people, when you hear boost your immunity, boost your immunity, why do we care so much? Because it, one of the things, I, because my entire life, you've been doing research from like HIV clinical trials in Uganda to um, you were the chairman or of the, I always mess this up, but the Oral HIV AIDS Research Alliance, OHARA. Oh. And you were studying how, when you're immunocompromised from HIV, how fungal infections can cause an issue, right? Absolutely. So what I've always understood from you is the problem is if your immunity is compromised, even infections that usually would not be a big deal can become a very big deal. Yes, this is really the case, especially like you have certain organisms which they never cause an infection and suddenly when your immune system weakens, then even those common or garden sort of organisms which usually don't cause an infection, they could do that, okay? And, and one we talk about a lot in the area of gut health is Canada, right? And so you've, literally for your PhD in 1976, is that yes. right? Okay, yeah. Um, wow, that's a long time ago now. <laughs> but even since then, you've been studying Canada, and what you've always told me is like, listen, Canada is actually in and of itself pretty much okay if your immunity is good, right? Yes. But if you your immunity is compromised, you can start seeing Canada overgrowth, and that's called candidiasis, right? And that's, again, because your immunity usually is actually able to keep on top of a lot of infections, is that fair? Exactly, that's why, to put it simply, I always say candida or candidiasis, the infection that caused by candida is the disease of the immunocompromised. What do we mean by the immunocompromised immunity? Is that, as you know, our immunity, it could be local immunity or it could be systemic immunity. One example, for example, when we have a cut, sometimes you start to see it's 
has some sore soreness redness you know why because the immune cells coming there trying to fight the germs in the wound so that's localized that's immunity. localized whereas systemic is what is in our blood we have cells in our blood where they are able to fight infection so when you have somebody who has for example Crohn's disease they have inflammatory uh, response or inflammatory symptoms it's because their immunity or immune cells and immune system coming to try to it's actually going into overdrive overdrive right. that's exactly the case and isn't that a lot of times with allergic reactions that inflammation is your body trying to fight something off that's not necessarily there and it's an allergic reaction that's what we think of a lot yeah. of times yeah a lot of the time whenever we see a foreign body then our system our immune system wants to come and say look this is not one of me I want to get rid of it and that's where the immune system so, so, is so, very important so when we're talking about immunity people are typically they really mean systemic immunity is that correct systemic as well as local immunity, okay you know um, okay so so let's get down now one layer we've talked about how immunity how it relates to basically infections is if your immune system is compromised infections that you know and, and just to be clear there are some infections like HIV they will overwhelm your immune system and cause you to become immunocompromised but then there's other things like influenza that for the vast majority of people with a healthy immune system their body can fight it off absolutely correct so let's get into the microbiome and immunity so walk people through what what's going on in the microbiome that impacts your immunity okay let me tell you what is the microbiome first microbiome is the collection of organisms that live in and in our body you find in the skin you find in your mouth but really relevant to what we are talking about, a huge number of them is present in the gut. So let me pause so you there on two the points, right? Because my job is to like unpack this stuff that is kind of second nature to us, but so people really understand. So when you're talking about a collection of organisms on the skin, you know, the gut, other places, what you really mean is there are actually several microbiomes in and on our body, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, like you have in the mouth, different from what you have in the gut, different from what you have in the skin. It's basically bacteria, fungus, and viruses, and other microorganisms that uh, live on our body. Right, okay? right. So how does that relate to immunity? How it ties that relate to immunity is really very interesting and based on recent studies, where the organisms that live in our gut, okay, they are made of good bacteria and good fungus. But sometimes when we have, let's say, irritable bowel syndrome, we have, in addition to these good bacteria and good fungus, we have bad ones that cause disease. And that's why we have all the inflammation, our inflammatory symptoms, okay? So to me, in our gut, we want to have a good beneficial bacteria and so, so that makes sense, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna push you. So, but why? Why do we care? Why? Because these organisms, they are not just sitting there doing nothing. In fact, now science is showing that they keep the bad pathogens under control. Not only this, they also cross talk together. They communicate not only with each other, also with our brain. You know, it's called gut brain access. And all of this can affect your immune system. What's so interesting about these good bugs that we need to nurture and let them grow is they secrete small compounds or small molecules. And these molecules, they help your immune system. How, how do they help? What they, they, for example, they try to uh, affect the cytokines, which are these substances secreted by immune cells. and. For example, interferon, interleukin, growth factors, all of these are secreted. And these play an important role in keeping the bugs under control. If you don't have these systems or these cytokines, some of them are pro-inflammatory, others are anti-inflammatory. We need the good guys, we need the anti-inflammatory. And that's what keeps the organisms under control. And so when people talk about, we hear this stat a lot, is that 70% of our immune system is in the gut. What do they mean by that? You know, what they mean is that 
recent studies are showing there is what you call really immune cells and immune systems local as well as connected to systemic uh, our, our systemic body made of immune cells that are there to try to keep the bad organisms up that's why sometimes when you have for example a damage to your gut lining these organisms they come and start to try to compare to com sorry they start to control these pathogens because we don't want them to go into our uh, through our blood and uh, circulation that, that's what they call like leaky gut exactly that's yeah. leaky gut so so having good organisms good bacteria and good fungus they will allow us to not only protect against other organisms but also nurture and support the immune cells so in, in what i want you to explain is i understand around gut health and immunity but how does it relate to more general infections and the microbiome in the gut like what's the connection there to immunity like basically i'm asking why is it so important that if your gut is healthy it protects your overall systemic immunity does that make sense beyond just the gut because there is as i mentioned before there is a communication between our gut and brain as if they, we used to think before that our brain that really controls everything. Now we know that there is bi-directional, the back and forth communication. And then if we have a balanced gut, we are gonna have better really neurological sy systems, okay? However, if we have dysbiosis or what is what is what it means imbalance, then you are gonna start sending messages to for example, to our brain, so that it starts to release chemicals there, which will increase your stress. It could cause autism and other uh, diseases. So the gut now, based on recent, the last 10 years or so studies, is becoming a central part, not only for our gut health, but for our overall health. Right, so one of the things when we've done uh, at Biome, like clinical trials to study the microbiota, of, for example, people with autism versus people without. So one of the things we've talked about is that we're at that point in microbiome research where you're seeing correlation, but not yet causation, right? Like, so we know there's a relationship between microbiota and uh, brain. Uh, microbiota and even pain, microbiota and immunity, right? But we're still trying to figure out like what is what are those those ties? So, in something, and just to be clear, those ties are are still being proven out, right? They're, exactly. They're, this yeah, is yeah. really the next phase. Right. Up till now, we understand that there is microbes there. We know that they can affect our health. Now we are into the exciting area is what we can do to modulate them and change them so that we maintain our health. Right, so in, in your latest NIH grant that you got this past summer, give us the 30 second overview of like what you're studying to make that connection. What we are trying to study is we found in our uh, publications, the first publication where we started looking at Crohn's disease, that in our gut we have an imbalance where we have increase of bacteria that is pathogenic in other words, that cause disease such as E. coli, Serratia marcescens, two types of bacteria, but also we are seeing an increase in Candida, especially Candida tropicalis. So now we put a grant to try to understand the mechanism of how these work together. Because by understanding this mechanism, we are hoping to find ways to prevent as well as treat the uh, Crohn's disease. And, and, and when you're saying mechanism, you mean like mechanism of action, right? Like what, what causes this to happen? Because if you then know that, then you can adjust the mechanism. Exactly, right? and how they work together. Got it. Why do they cause issues? So, so, so bringing it back to the whole conversation around, it, it, you know, again, just to hit the elephant in the room, everybody's concerned about COVID-19, right? So optimizing gut health, and just to be very clear, because we think this is critical, and some of the things being said are going way beyond this, which we think are utterly inappropriate, is there is no product that is going to protect you or cure or anything versus COVID-19, correct? We at the moment. At, at the moment, but like there are therapeutics, there are vaccinations and study, but like just to be very blanket clear, all these immunity support products people are talking about are, are helpful for like overall wellness, but 
there, if people are seeing things saying that it will cure, protect you from, that's not accurate. No, because we don't have the science yet and right. the research. Right, so that's, that's one of the things that actually prompted us to do this, was we were seeing people making pretty wild claims around what their products can do, especially specifically around COVID-19, right? So one of the things um, we really wanna encourage people to do is be super mindful of your sources right now for information, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And, and so for example, even when you're seeing articles, you and I have talked about this a lot, articles that are citing uh, medical publications or they're showing charts or any of those things, do yourself a favor, click on that link and in a scientific paper, explain to people like what should they be looking at to get you know an overview? Because a lot of people are not going to want to read like in-depth science papers, but like is it the abstract of an article or the conclusion? Just so they get their head I mean, around. The abstract will give you an overall view of what is the article all about, right. what they what they intended to study, the results, and then of course the conclusion. So right. it's a summary of right. this uh, of what the finding of it. Study. Yeah, and the study, like things we are looking at as like people in like a scientific based company, we're always looking at their clinical trials that people are doing. We're always looking at how big was the clinical trial? Like, was there exactly. what's called statistical significance? Like, is there, uh, it, were there enough people and were the results strong enough to show that the impact was actually uh, repeatable, right? Like, actually had an effect, sure, right? Sure, sure. And, and then the other thing, um, when you're looking at any sort of scientific publication, it's very critical to understand what at the end they say can be taken away from the clinical trial, right? Yes, yes. I think also sometimes it's a little bit really complicated for the general audience. Yes, yeah, yeah. So you just can have some idea about what, they, what their uh, conclusion, but you know from the quality of the paper, the quality of the publication right. you're making. Is it peer reviewed? It's peer reviewed, of right. course, important. Right. Yeah, that's very so, so going back to um, immunity in in the age of COVID nineteen, right? So, so how does uh, microbiome health at this point? How does it appear to relate to uh, protecting and impacting um, just protection from um, issues like no, this? No, it's the general principle of immunity. Yeah. If you have a strong immunity, then you are going to be able to. You are in a better position. To really fight uh, COVID-19, right? But if your immunity is weak, right, that is gonna play against you. That's why it's very important for you to try to do everything to try to really augment and support your immunity because that's in the long term will be very very good and will protect you against infections. Uh, we have. Okay, and so we're gonna do some more videos and talk about ways people can actually actually optimize their immunity and support their immunity because one of the things we always harp on is that uh, people want a silver bullet right they want to uh, eat whatever they want and then take an antacid or they want to you know so we always talk about um, you really have to be taking a holistic approach from, from lifestyle from the exactly. way you're eating the way you're taking care of your body all these things so we'll get into some of that and um, you know always obviously uh, going off we, you're going to share some of the data some of the science and Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, we're going to translate that into English. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. So we're going to do a bunch of these. Um, we're just sort of throwing a camera up and doing it. So thanks, Dad, and oh, keep going. It's a pleasure.